Andaman and Nicobar Islands, a chain of islands on India's east, is famous for its pristine beaches and the cellular jail built by the British to imprison political prisoners. But do you know that this island chain is so strategically located that in the event of a war, it can virtually choke China's economy. In this video, we'll discuss the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, often described as one of the most strategically located island chains in the world. We'll also discuss China's Malacca Dilemma and India's first and only tri services command, the ANI command. Welcome to another episode of India's Strategic Geography. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to the ARC. From the early documents, it has been established that the archipelago was used by the Chola Empire as a strategic naval base between 1014 to 1042 CE. They named the island Manakavaram in Tamil, which translates to open land. Later, the name was distorted and changed, and finally during the British Raj, the entire island chain came to be known as the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are two groups of islands, the Andaman Islands in the north and the Nicobar Islands in the south, separated by the 10 degree channel. There are a total of 836 islands, out of which only 36 are inhabited. Now in terms of distance, it can clearly be seen here that the islands are closer to Southeast Asian countries than the Indian mainland. Take a look at the distances to Port Blair, which is in South Andaman, from major cities of different countries around it. The distance from Chennai and Kolkata is more than Yangon, Bangkok and Cox Bazar. The southernmost point on the Nicobar Islands is less than 200 km away from the northern tip of Indonesia. The islands are situated by the 10 degree and 6 degree channels, through which some of the vital sea lines of communication pass. The east-west shipping route, which is world's one of the busiest shipping routes, passes through this region. The island's proximity to these routes creates a series of choke points. Despite the island chain's strategic location, it remained neglected for decades after India's independence, mainly because of the presence of many indigenous tribes and extensive flora and fauna in the islands. But the changing geopolitics in the region, with a more aggressive and assertive China, expanding its footprints in the Indian Ocean region, India has been forced to prioritize development in the islands. A slew of infrastructure projects has been approved for the islands in the recent years. In 2020, the Chennai Andaman and Nicobar 2300 km long 100 Gbps undersea internet cable was inaugurated to provide high-speed internet connections to Port Blair and seven remote islands of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands chain. In November this year, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change gave approval for the mega development projects worth Rs 72,000 crores for the Great Nicobar Islands, the southernmost in the island chain. Government aims to develop the island to utilize its location and geography and turn it into a global destination for trade, business and tourism. Under this plan, a greenfield township, a power plant and a greenfield international airport will be built. But the most significant part of this development plan is the transshipment terminal. Transshipment in simple terms means offloading of containers from one ship and loading it onto another towards its destination. Transshipment happens primarily if there is no direct shipping line between origin and destination ports or if the destination port doesn't have the facility to accommodate larger vessels. But transshipment is big business. According to estimates, the Indian port industry suffered a revenue loss of Rs 1500 crores in 2013-14 due to transshipment of containers destined for India in nearby transshipment ports in Colombo, Singapore and Port Klang in Malaysia. There have been plans to develop transshipment ports in India for quite some time. And finally, India is now developing a transshipment port at the Vision Jam port in Kerala and the second one at the Great Nicobar Islands. Transshipment facility here will not only serve India but also the nearby countries like Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Indonesia, etc. But the question is, what is the need for these thousands of crores of investment in infrastructure for an island chain that only contributes to 0.5% of India's GDP? It's because the island chain occupies only 0.25% of India's total land mass, but has 30% of India's exclusive economic zone. Less than 7% of the entire island chain has been developed in all these years. 
इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स आर एसेंशियल नॉट ओनली फॉर द इनहेबिटेंट्स बट इट विल ऑल्सो बूस्ट द ट्रेमेंडस टूरिज्म पोटेंशियल ऑफ द आईलैंड्स ऑल्सो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट इज क्रूशियल फॉर द मिलिट्री यूज बाय द ए एन आई कमांड आई हैव ऑलरेडी मैंशन द अंडमान एंड निकोबार आईलैंड लोकेशन क्लोज टू इंटरनेशनल सी लाइन्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन एंड ओवरलुकिंग द मलाका स्टेट मलाका स्टेट इज अ नैरो स्ट्रेच ऑफ सी साउथ ऑफ द अंडमान एंड निकोबार आईलैंड्स एंड बिटवीन इंडोनेशिया एंड मलेशिया एंड कनेक्टेड टू द सिंगापोर स्टेट इन द साउथ ईस्ट इट्स अराउंड नाइन हंड्रेड किलोमीटर लॉन्ग एंड इट कनेक्ट्स द इंडियन ओशन विद द साउथ चाइना सी बट हाउ इम्पॉर्टेंट इज दिस रूट टू चाइना चाइना इज वर्ल्ड्स लार्जेस्ट नेट ऑयल इम्पोर्टर एंड सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट ऑयल कंज्यूमर चाइना इम्पोर्ट्स टेन मिलियन बैरल्स ऑफ क्रूड ऑयल एवरी सिंगल डे crude oils are extremely essential to fuel the industrial growth of china and hence china's economy close to 80% of china's oil requirements are fulfilled by imports and around 80% of china's total oil imports travels in tankers through the narrow malacca strait malacca strait's importance can be gauged from the fact that 40% of all global shipping passes through it this makes the malacca strait the lifeline of china and china's over dependence on it exposes its strategic vulnerability known as the malacca dilemma coined by the then president of china hu jintao in 2003 malacca strait is a choke point that in the event of war can be blocked by the adversary effectively choking critical supplies to china with this dilemma in mind china over the years has been expanding its reach and presence in the indian ocean region to protect its maritime interests and defend its supply lines China's ambition to transform itself into a true blue water navy has resulted in its bases in Djibouti and Cambodia. China's Belt and Road Initiative clearly has a military component, often described as the string of pearls around India, with acquisition of ports in India's vicinity in Pakistan, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Myanmar. We'll try to cover this topic in a separate video, but let's take a look at China's plans to bypass the critical Malacca Strait. trying to find alternative routes to reduce its dependence on the strait as part of china's belt and road initiative china announced the china pakistan economic corridor in 2013 as part of this project a vast network of road railway and oil pipelines are being constructed that will connect gwadar port to kashgar in south sinkiang from kashgar goods can be transported to other cities of china Similarly, China aims to develop the China-Myanmar economic corridor by constructing road, railway networks, oil pipelines, etc., to connect Kunming in the Yunnan province with Yangon and Kyakpyu in Myanmar via Mandalay. However, instabilities in both Pakistan and Myanmar have caused delays in these projects. There have been cost overruns and security challenges for the projects. Also, neither of these projects solves China's security challenge entirely. Gwadar's proximity to India's western seaboard and CMEC near Andaman and Nicobar still make them vulnerable. Another alternative that China has been dwelling on is the Kra or Thai Canal project. This proposed project will cut across the Kra Isthmus in southern Thailand, connecting the Gulf of Thailand and South China Sea to the Andaman Sea. It will be shorter by around 1200 kilometers than the Malacca route. However, there has been opposition against this project within Thailand. and nothing substantial has happened on the ground since 2015 when an mou was signed in this regard the other alternative to malacca for china is the two straits in the southern part of indonesia sunda and lombok strait these two straits connect the java sea with the indian ocean clearly they do provide alternative routes but it comes with a cost because these are considerably longer than the malacca route Secondly the Sunda Strait is narrower and shallower limiting the size of vessel that can traverse through it though Lombok Strait doesn't have any such limitation the strait is very close to Australian mainland and hence susceptible to Australian military action in case of a conflict there are also Australia controlled islands like Koko or Killing and Christmas Island that can monitor shipping activity through this strait with increasing cooperation among the quad countries These routes are not out and out alternatives for China. So China will continue to depend on the Malacca Strait for the major chunk of its energy needs in the foreseeable future. 
at the same time expand its presence in the Indian Ocean region. Speaking of growing Chinese influence in the region, this particular island north of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands has become a concern for India. It's called the Coco Island and is situated at a distance of just 40 kilometers from the Landfall Island, the northernmost tip of ANI. The island was under British Burma's control. But post India's independence in 1947, there was an opportunity to take control of this strategic island. But apparently Lord Mountbatten convinced Nehru to keep it under British control for a while. After Burma's independence from the British, the island was taken over by Burma, what's today known as Myanmar. The island is now being used by China for surveillance purposes. I have discussed Coco Island's location, strategic nature and Chinese installations in another video. Please check out this card. Increasing Chinese presence in the Indian Ocean region forced the Indian establishment to think out of the box. And the Andaman and Nicobar Command, India's first and only integrated tri-services theatre command was raised in 2001. That means elements of Army, Navy and Air Force deployed simultaneously, working jointly under one commander, to monitor shipping activities, keep a watch on the remote islands and guard the skies. Since the creation of the CDS post, there has been renewed push for theatre aviation. We'll discuss the topic in a separate video. The ANI command is pivotal to India's counter-China strategy. Post the Galwan incident in May 2020, expansion plans at the military bases in Andaman and Nicobar Islands are being expedited. More resources are being allocated from the parent services, giving it more teeth. The naval air stations, INS Baz and INS Kohasa, are being expanded and upgraded. India routinely conducts naval exercises like Milan and Malabar with friendly countries to increase cooperation. India signing agreements like Lemoa, Comcasa, Becca, etc. with the US signifies willingness on both the sides for military and strategic cooperation with an eye on China. It also enables both the countries to use military facilities on either side for refueling and replenishments. Here is one example. The proximity of Andaman and Nicobar Islands to the Southeast Asian countries makes India's outreach to these countries easier. Andaman and Nicobar Islands are central to India's Act East policy. India has taken multiple initiatives with the Southeast Asian countries to promote trade, tourism and people-to-people -people contacts. However, there have been apprehensions in the past by these countries with regards to militarization of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. But India has managed to assuage these concerns. As India asserts its role as the net security provider in the Indian Ocean region, flexing its economic and military muscle, the strategic location of Andaman and Nicobar Islands is going to be extremely crucial. The island chain is going to play a vital role in India's Act East and the larger Indo-Pacific strategy. However, any civil-military development has to take into account the sensitive ecology of the islands. A balanced approach on development and environmental aspects is extremely crucial. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon with a new video. I would also like to thank all our new subscribers. Welcome aboard and keep supporting the channel. Thank you.